So okay, welcome to part two of the bio bio yeah well, I botched that of the biomedia project interview slash history roundup. This is a very a very enlightening dialogue thus far. We've learned a lot of things about the site's history, BSO one's history, the community in general, and how it used to be back when Bionicle was still around. So I would heavily advocate you listen to part one of this. But now we're yes. going to continue <laughs> with the line of thinking we left off on <laughs> about their forums and basically biomedia project coming into today rather than the past. Okay, so, so continue a on. after our forums, after our forums, it was the um, end of our three-year term because on our server, our, our uh, domain and our server are connected by the same plan. So we purchase and renew the plan every three years. And every every year we have a uh, one one time fee of like it's about ten dollars I think. So at, it was at the end of our term, and Tronic asked me uh, surprisingly, "Hey guys, I'm gonna renew," which I which I and the staff were very very grateful for because he was supporting us financially throughout all this time. We were extremely grateful for this. So he said, "Orn, I'm going to renew the plan." Um, since I have this opportunity, I'd like to ask you whether you'd like to change your domain name. And I said, yes. So I'm going to change it to biomediaproject.com. Let's fulfill our destiny. Hooray! Guys. Yay! Everything has been Time building some, to this. Time for some unity. And yes. and if, if you'd like to bring up an interesting image right now, let's take a look at the folder again, and let's bring up 2005-1. Uh, <laughs> if we look at the web, Bionicle web contents section, you can see that all roads lead to the Biomedia project. Excuse all roads. me while I die in my seat. <laughs> yeah, so we are the successor of BioncleStory.com, Bioncle.com, Biosector01.com, and Tronic.org. Wow. All of those. Yeah, so we are taking up, uh, you know, a lot of responsibility. So now that we have our new domain name, uh, we are we are ready to continue with whatever projects we're going to continue. But um, before I talk about that, it's now time to talk about community relations because oh. I haven't really talked about oh. because I haven't really talked about Swert and you guys want to okay. know that relationship. I'm yeah. sure. Right. I want to talk about that relationship. So where okay, you, you begin? This is the interesting <laughs> part. Okay, we've long yes, since heard sure. about Baby, the relationship. On. <laughs> okay, so we've long since I'll, heard about the relationship between BSO One and the Biomedia Project, and none of us really know any concrete details about it. We have the vague understanding, but we've never got the full story, okay. at least from your okay, side. So, so, what is the deal? So, so this is All the right. first time I've explained this in full, and I mean in full, not just over audio, but also in text, because in text uh, I've you know, included a few snippets, <laughs> and if you're if you're a fan of the site, you probably have seen a little bit more than most people, I would say. Because just because of the stuff we put on the site, if you don't explore all pages, you won't see, you know, all the stuff. So BSO one. All right. So let's go back to two thousand five, right? I talked about this before. We I contacted Swert saying, Okay, uh, are we going to get any of this resource stuff carried over? And he said no, right? Okay, so Fine. Okay. So in 2006, we start the Biomedia project, and in 2007, we have our first stream tests. Those were the first time we tested streaming the games, and so I I went to the uh, BSO one page for the Mnog and the Mnog two, and I added links to those pages to our direct links, mind you, to our streaming games. And the reason why I did that is because we're a huge site. Why not get some traffic from the big one, right? And I think they would appreciate it because you know this is something that could yeah. add to their comprehensiveness of their site. You know, you click the link, go play the game directly without having to download anything. So I thought they would appreciate this. Guess what? <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> and and yes, I'm I'm going to call you out now. Oh I'm no! Going to call out your name. Oh no! Electric Electric Turak. I know you removed those links. Oh no! I know you did it. <laughs> yes, you did it. Okay, so after he removed those links, I was, you know, I was kind of puzzled. Why would he remove those? They're they're perfectly working links to our games, dude. We work hard on those games, and to my surprise, a few months later, 
people come and they add links to our site. And guess what? Electric Turk doesn't remove them. Electric Turk lets them stay. So apparently they have some prejudice from me or, or just because of some inconsistent policies between them or communication errors or whatever, for whatever reason, when I added the links, Electric Track removed them. And when other people added the links, they weren't removed. So I, I don't know, maybe it was because, you know, I have some involvement in the site that they didn't want us, you know, promoting our own site from their stuff. Anyways, so after they did that, I talked to Squirt and he was like, okay, so if you, if you have these links and stuff, um, we really can cite and you know I don't know what the users are putting on the site so I said okay I'll accept that but you know really I don't believe that um, I don't believe that because even on our site which is comparatively smaller at that time even at that early stage we had the tools available to us to know whether we were being linked to from uh, BSO one we knew where they were being linked to in, in uh, BMP 3.0 at that time on our dedicated server. We knew where they were linking to our pages. We knew. And since we knew, obviously they should have known as well because they probably have access to the same tools that we do in their admin C panel. Anyways, so he says, I, I don't have any involvement in this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I say, OK, so we that that we let that sit for a while. We let them, you know, play our games directly from the download links. But eventually we reach BMP 4.0 and we get really big. And it's that point that we realize we don't really need any help from BSO1 anymore. We realize, OK, now we want to be acknowledged as a strong organization that has dedicated people working to preserve this stuff. We want to be acknowledged. And when I say we want to be acknowledged, I mean we want to be given credit. Uh, I don't think that's unreasonable, right? I, really. I just wanted I just wanted the link at the bottom to say, you know, play online game at Bio, Biomedia Project or online game brought to you by Biomedia Project. I asked Swart, uh, can you give us credit in some form on that link on each page that you use this? And he says, no, I can't. Hmm. So then I say, OK, if you can't do that, fine. OK, just remove those links. And he says, oh, OK, whatever. But it ends up not being done. Maybe he forgot, maybe, okay, I'm not gonna assume anything. I'm just gonna say that it never happened. The links were never removed and they were still direct linking to our site. And at this point we were upset because I can understand if that. you look at their external links section, uh, underneath where the links were, it would just say play online game. So if you, if you make it like that to someone who doesn't know what external links means, uh, it just looks like you're linking to your own server and it makes it look like you own us and we don't want it to look like you own us because we paid for this server and we are maintaining it on our own time and we put all this work into doing it and you're not giving us any acknowledgement and you refuse to give us any acknowledgement that we've done all this stuff. OK, so then I go to Squirt and I say, OK, I, I don't want to cause any trouble, so why don't we Think about mergers, right? What what if we merge together? What if we just put all this stuff together so we don't have to argue about this stuff? And then he says, uh, what would I get from it, right? He says, what what would I get from it? Yeah. And I say, OK, so you're you're just looking at this from a personal site benefit point of view. So you're you're not really interested in what we have to offer. So all right, I'm I'm not I'm not going to pander to you saying, oh look at all this stuff we have. Please let us join. Please let us join. Because why should we? If you don't, if you need me to plead you, plead you to join, I'm not going to do it. Okay, it's just not going to happen unless we have some mutual agreement. I'm looking to build a site that has all this stuff together for the community. I'm not looking to build this site just to please Swert or just to please. Uh, any single person, right? It has to be a mutual effort. It can't be just me uh, wanting someone else to be satisfied. It has to be everyone being satisfied in order for me I or everyone that. else. I respect right? that mentality. So, so because he wasn't really interested in merging the site, um, this sort of conflict erupted, right? Because they were direct linking to our files. We didn't want them to do that because they refused to give credit. That was the basal problem. And then so we decided to take matters into our own hands. We were thinking, OK, what can we do to prevent uh, the people looking at these wiki pages from thinking that 
ESO1 owns our server. That was the problem here. People were going to think that they they owned a server with all these files on it when in reality it was ours. So we we decided, OK, we're going to redirect all links from BSO one to our homepage. That way, if you link to us, you can still reach our files. You can still reach everything. It's just that you can't uh, directly get to our files. You have to click games page and go to your game. You can't just go to your game directly because that way you see our logo. And if you see our logo, you get interested in what we're doing. And that brings us more traffic, which means we get more people enjoying the things that we've worked hard on, which is the goal here. We want people to enjoy the nostalgia of what we put together over these years. We don't want it to just be us making stuff and then people not being able to look at it. We want it to be in more places. So we did that. And then interestingly, interestingly enough, guess what happened? What happened? Guess what happened? <laughs> Come on. So then Swert gets back to me unexpectedly without me emailing him or PMing him. He gets back to me. And he, he wants me to remove a phrase on our Google Doc that we link on the site to because uh, on our site we have the uh, list of tasks that you can look at to see what we're doing because you can't see what we're doing on any other page. You have to look at the Google Doc. So we have that so we can view it, right? So he looks at that and he sees what we've written down there. And what we've written is something along the lines of, okay, so Swart refuses to provide credit to these links that are direct linking to our server and he's not going to make any effort to remove them either. So he's not he's basically not giving us any other choice to fulfill our our um, uh, not even demands. I wouldn't even say demands. I just wanted common courtesy, right? Respect even. I can understand so that. He's not he's not going to do this. So okay, I wrote on the Google Doc, how dare they wow. use our server resources? How dare they use our server resources without giving us credit? I wrote oh, that, yeah. and then he got mad. He came back to me, and he was like, remove it. And I'm like, OK, why should I remove it? It's the truth. Are you afraid of the truth being out there? <laughs> you know, it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be like that. So the truth is there. If people want to look, they can look, right? And throughout all this, I'm not, I'm not looking to, you know, like say, oh, Squirt is bad and all this stuff. Um, it may sound like it, but honestly, I'm just reporting what decisions he has made. These are the decisions that he's made that link the site to ours. So he could have made different decisions and I would be talking about those decisions differently. But because he offended us when he refused our any any basic offer, we would tell him, okay, can you remove these links if you don't want to give credit? It's like, okay, I'm not gonna do it. So if you're not even gonna do that, then you know it it it, it inevitably will cause a con conflict. So it comes out that way, even though it wasn't intended. Yeah. It wasn't intended but it came out that way because of the events. So after all these events, the um, the most recent con uh, contact I had with Swert was with um, Makuta Fest. So in 2012, we were launching BMP 4.5, which meant that we had all our tiles finished. We had all the streaming finished. No more lists of links. That was the whole idea behind BMP 4.5. It was the elimination, the clean elimination of all the links that were text links. Only files uh, that were accessible through uh, tiles or streamed through the um, streaming player that we had. And same thing for streaming games. So since we were making this big push, this um, I wouldn't say advertising because we didn't really put it in a lot of places. We just put it um, on our on our website. But Makuta Fest looked interesting to me, and the way and the reason why it looked interesting was because it looked like it was a community effort. It looked like oh, here's this partnership between the Three Virtues Podcast and Makuta Fest, which is um, the event hosted by the BSO One podcast. And they've had a, a podcast for much longer than we have. And, Wait a second. You know, if Wait a second. Hold yes? it. I got to put the kibosh in something you just said. Yes. Uh, Makuta Fest is not a – it's a common misconception I would imagine some people have. Makuta Fest is not BSO One's invention. On the it contrary, it's ours. <laughs> it's ours. It is ours. Yeah, there was oh, a, they yeah. back in the day. This is a short version. We used to be a podcast called IBZP, and it standing for Independent Bionicle Zone Podcast IBZP. And the head of that podcast was Vardaran, who's remained with us to this point. Basically, he was brainstorming with Krolix, who used to be the head of the BSO One podcast, and he proposed the idea of a live joint show. 
and we alternate every couple of years. We one year we have it on, you know, their site featured mainly. We used to have it on our website back when it was still up and running, and it's Makuta Fest is not owned by anyone. It's it may have been our idea, but it's shared by us jointly. And it is a community-driven event, so I just wanted to clear it. But we still pad it, mother. Perhaps, yes. Yeah. Perhaps that is true, but carry on. Yeah, see, so I didn't know this, right? So I just went to the BS1 podcast page. Oh, Makuta Fest. I assume it must be their, their doing, right? So yeah. we, put, we put together a video for Makuta Fest. Real. It was the BMP 4.5 trailer, and that was the first video that I created specifically to advertise the Biomedia project. So uh, it was only a minute long. It, I, I wasn't asking a lot, okay? I was asking very little, just a minute. And I said, okay, uh, Makuta Fest, guys, uh, can I show this video during your event? It looks like a community event. I asked the BSO1 guys, and they said no. <laughs> so that told me that told me that they were going to pick and choose the the people that were going to get on. It wasn't a community effort. It wasn't open to everyone. It was just the people that they liked. And from what you just said, that makes it even worse. Why does it make it worse? It makes it worse because they didn't even own it. You said you came up with it, right? They they never consulted us about this. And yes, we technically came up with the idea, but we don't, so we don't claim full ownership of the concept. So technically, they didn't even have the authority to reject me. Is that correct? Uh, not without consulting us, I wouldn't say, no. So they never because told you. I'll, I'll put it to you this way. Had you come to me and said, hey, you want to do this? I would have said, oh, yeah, I know those guys. There's a Bionicle Media Project. Sure. This is a community thing. Let's promote them. Why not? We had we had some dude come on and uh, it's like an acquaintance of ours and talk about the Biotube podcast. He mentioned it briefly during the Q&A segment. And that's not really well known at all. We would have, of course, let you in. We had Tridaltix come in and talk about SpherusMagna.com, which is an idea <laughs> and like a work in progress thing. The BMP would have been no big deal. Yeah. So, in my opinion, you know, this is just my opinion. If you're going to have a community event, you shouldn't reject anyone. Just leave it as long as it takes to include everyone. Because if you reject everyone, then you start being, you know. Yeah picky and it it, it it just become it just comes off as overly you know arrogant like oh they're not good enough we only want these guys you know so that that's the most recent contact we have with bso1 and there's a bigger problem at stake here besides bso1 the problem is the bionicle community is dwindling and if yep. we just keep keeping to ourselves like we do and we don't, you know, try to contact each other. Then each island gets smaller. The sea level you keeps right. rising, and that sea level are, is the is the time that yeah. elapses, right? So those islands are gonna sink unless they join together to make a bigger one. So that's that's what I think needs to happen in the future in order to save this community. I, I do want. mean save, because if you look at BZ Power, would you say that the with, that the audience that the average number of people on that site at any given time, I would say that number is decreasing. I would yeah, say. Yeah, it obviously is. And if I look at BSO1, uh, on their front page, their most recent news event is not exactly recent. Okay? <laughs> it's April Fool's. So, it? It's April Fool's. So that, so that tells me that they need to put more work into their site in order to make Here's it seem alive. Here's the thing. Okay? I, this is directly relevant to what you're saying. BSO1. If the BSO one guys listen to this, I mean no disrespect by saying this. This is just my my statement. And I may be completely wrong. You guys may know better than I do. I don't exactly see how there's that much more that can be done with a wiki. There's a point where you have to make the wiki, get all the information correct, and then label it done, call it finished, because there's no new bionicle news. There's a point where you can refine things as much as you can and then Call it quits. BSO1 does not strike me as the kind of project that can sustain itself forever. Unless you do the podcast, so, which you okay. don't do. But oh, I, you, Bionicle Man told me they're working on more podcasts. So that's not dead. But the wiki part itself, yeah, of course there's no news articles. There's nothing that can be made news. There's nothing they can do. That project is pretty much, I don't know how many much more they can refine their content. Well, yeah, you're right, but we're talking about the main page, like 
Yes, yeah, the main yeah. page. What do you the mean? Featured layout? article and stuff like featured that. Featured article. Oh, the featured article? That hasn't been updated? The core war. <laughs> if you manage... Never, like, That's a completely different matter. That, that just shows inactivity. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if you manage a website, there is one thing you need to remember. Update or die. Because <laughs> if you don't update, you are dead. People will think literally that you're not working on the site anymore. Right. So the constant updates provide reassurance to the fan base that you're still working on this. Yes, we're still doing this. Yes, we still want your attention. That is oh, what I'm it tells pretty, people. This, this okay? well, I'm pretty sure I'm dead already, but you know. <laughs> well, I just don't. This, so this I it, actually, yeah. if people don't see any progress, you know, they're just going to leave. So I would like to see BSO1 step up their game and do some more work. OK, and uh, the other recent project they had was the uh, Metro UI tiles. So they also did Metro UI tiles. Yeah. They started them later than we did. So at the top, the, I, I saw the I saw the work in progress versions of these tiles. Uh, they were blank for a while, but then they got filled in. They had the custom created, uh, very colorful tiles at the top. You would click those, and they would bring you to um, uh, pages that aggregated a bunch of different um, links and information and all that stuff. It was intended to make the wiki a bit easier to navigate. That was one of their big projects. And when I say projects, uh, there are two types of things that you can do with your website. OK, you can uh, create new things on your website, create new uh, projects, which means you're adding features to the site or you can do maintenance stuff. And by maintenance stuff, I mean updating your plugins, adding stuff to archives, posting news. That's to me, that's maintenance. You're not doing anything new. You're just continuing what you've already done. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, at, sorry. at, at, at so one I have not seen them take any projects on. I don't believe from, they can. From the definition of project that I've just, just described after they completed the Metro UI tiles they have at the top there. I have not seen them with any new projects. However, at the BMP, we are constantly making new projects, and I will reveal some at the end of this podcast. Okay, cool. So we are still going. We are not done. Okay, we are never done, or or until we see that there is literally no more to do. Okay, then we're done. But I still see a lot of things that we can do. Well, and for a media the compilation, goal, the fact that you have that mindset is very reassuring to me personally, because it shows that there are still some people in the community, besides from us, that are devoted and BZP, I guess, to updating and keeping current to the best of their ability. Carry on. You know, yeah, the, the Biomedia project, it should be whatever you want. And when I say that, I mean, if you want to be able to look at all this stuff on a desktop interface or online, you should be able to do that. If, if you want to be able to have an app on your phone to browse all this stuff, you should be able to do that. If you want to just browse by year, you should be able to do that. You know, you should be able to do anything you want on the site. And that is my goal. I want it to be the most flexible Bionicle website. I want it to have all the stuff viewable in a viewable in a beautiful interface that you can completely alter the way you look at things so it fits what you want to look at right so uh right now we have everything by uh content type and then by year but eventually i'd like to change things up and make it so we have another way to view things and i'll talk about that at the end but we have projects that we're working on we don't we don't just do the maintenance stuff you know if, if if you asked me where I would see the uh, BSO one in two years, I would say okay, they're probably going to be pretty much where they are right now. I don't think they're going to make any major changes to the site. If Swert hears this and says that's completely false, then I sincerely apologize. Okay. Well, I would love but, to. I, we asked them what do you guys have plans for the future on Makuta Fest, and basically they said we're going to focus on our podcast. We're gonna try and get that back up. We have an episode in the, you know, that's being created and edited. I don't believe they mentioned anything about the wiki because, as I said, the wiki's a wiki. Yeah. So I wonder if they can... ever update Hero Sector One. They do. That's I don't that's visit. that's currently being updated because there's new material to that's, work off of. That's okay. So I was thinking that. There's there's an interesting there's an interesting uh, concept that I work here because if you look at the Mask of Destiny site in Ooh. 2001, if you look at BZ Power in 2003, if you look at BSO1 uh, from from the time that they just went there with their wiki, uh, you can see that 
BZ Power and BSO One and Mask of Destiny, they look literally the same, except for BSO One with their uh, project tiles, which I just mentioned. That is BZ changing. Power looks a but, bit different, but but everything else, almost everything else, looks the same as it did almost ten years ago, and that to me is telling because it tells me that they only work on the maintenance side. They don't they don't want to start anything new. That's not how we work here. We always want to improve the site. Look at where we were in 2006. In 2006, we had two red lines and a bunch of links. Where are we now, right? If I think about where we will be in five years, I think we'll be amazing because we have all these concepts that we're working on in the future. I mean, in the background that we know are going to be completed and we know are going to bring new features to the site. We are always advancing. We we watch the other guys stay where they are and we just think, you know, that's that's not the way to drive this community forward. If you're not going to do anything, then the community is just going to leave. You need to do something to keep them engaged. That is my idea behind starting all these projects. The other thing is. There's there's an interesting uh, point because if you look at um, the interfaces of all the organizations that failed that were similar to the BMP, they are also similar to what we have now, right? If you look at the jet sliding board images and the Biomedia, or not Biomedia Project, uh, Biomaniacs uh, original bio encyclopedia, those also look very similar to what we have now. So clearly the type of site that you create depends on the type of content you have. But since BZ Power, and Biosector One, they're all main, they're mainly pages of text. They're mainly pages of text. But since we focus mainly on other content other than just text, we have that sort of freedom. And I say freedom because we can do whatever we want, because we have so much imagery we can use. We have so many videos we can use, right? Because we have the resources. It's just up to us how we want to arrange it. That that makes our site different. From the other ones, yeah. because we have a lot more flexibility in what we can use that the other sites just don't have. And I, I was thinking about this. You know, um, BSL One has this. Um, I, I shouldn't say has this because he's. I think he's left now. But Tricky, he was BSL One's uh, image guy. Yeah. And he, yeah, and I, I found a lot of uh, comparisons with him and me to be fairly accurate because he was the guy who was crawling. All, and I, I keep saying crawling because at the BMP, uh, we say crawling to refer to um, something that we're collecting or grabbing off the internet. And the or originating uh, originating form from crawling was uh, because web, web search engines are said to crawl the internet. They crawl for content and thus crawling yeah. was formed as a verb that we use. So we use that term whenever we uh, are talking about getting something from a site, bringing it offline. So we have it as a backup. So Triggy was doing all this crawling for BSO one and I thought, you know, that's really similar to what we do around here. But he stopped at images. They never went farther than images, which I find interesting because I thought if it was just a wiki, you would only need a couple images, that's fine. But he was continually continuously crawling for them, maybe just to improve the, the wiki and you know, with the wiki you do need images, but I thought it might be cool, hint hint, if <laughs> Biosector One could include some embedded videos, not just external links, not just those. I mean in the middle of the page, OK? Uh, right now, all of BSO1's uh, video links are to YouTube. What they've done is, well, instead of using a dedicated server like we do, they've decided to upload the videos that they want to share and have wiki pages on on YouTube. And that's perfectly fine, but they need to integrate it more, not just at the bottom, OK? That, that's just my opinion, OK? OK. <laughs> so, so with these with these videos, uh, I would say that it's not by any means a complete list on BSO1's end, because if if I open up my video archive and I look at all the videos I have, BSO1's list of official videos is probably one third to one half of what we have. Huh. So clearly they have. Clearly, they have missing articles or they don't care about the other ones. Yeah. I don't know why it's so arbitrary, because if I if I look at the list, some some videos have an article, some videos don't. There is no official distinction. Why? You know, so I just looked at those videos and I'm thinking, OK, I want some interop interoperability between these two sites, even if these BSO1 guys are going to refuse many of these offers that we talked to them about. Right. 
So what I did with the latest version of the video archive is I took a look at the uh, article names that they use for these videos and I copied those names directly. And the reason why I did this is because it will let the people who download those videos know exactly which video it is. Because if I don't do that, it ends up just being Tahu video number three or something like that, right? It's it's very, very arbitrary name. I don't want to have to do that. I want something that can link the, the sites together. So I started doing that. But while I was doing that, I realized they have a lot of things that are missing. And I don't think they have the people that, that know about this stuff to do that. So in that regard, BSO1 is understaffed. They're not understaffed on the authors, on the author, uh, on the writing side, I should say, but they're understaffed on the visual media side. And I guess that's 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 the same situation we have here. We, I, I typically, and JMMB as well, we typically write all the articles. Sometimes I write long form blog posts uh, for certain issues, like I just wrote a really long one discussing the future of the, uh, the fan base in its entirety. And you can go to the website and read it if you like after this podcast. But most of the time, it's just uh, JMMB and me posting articles. And that's fine because we have all the stuff that we need. We don't need any more people writing stuff for us. So we don't. That, that's the thing. See, we don't really have a lot of text on this on this website anymore. That's one of the proudest things I have about this website. It's very, very visual. It's very, very organic and it flows very nicely between the pages. The pages transition seamlessly and you you can click the the tile and it'll bring you to that link that you're trying to see whatever it is you're trying to see. And when you move your mouse over the tiles, they light up in response to what you're doing. It's very interactive, right? If you go to BSO one and you try that on most pages other than their tiles at the top, you won't see that type of active interface on, right? So ours is more, I, I would say ours is more engaging that way. So with these, with sure. these understaffed issues, you know, I, I think it's just a matter of like waiting because I was very surprised that we managed to get so many staff in 2013 because what my line of thought was originally like maybe 2010, 2011, uh, I thought that we would never ever get any more staff because I thought that everyone who knew about Bionicle Everyone who cared about Bionicle Media already knew who we were. Therefore, everyone who saw us and was interested has already joined. But apparently, that's not the case. Apparently, we still get new staff members joining. We had a bunch of staff joining this year, which makes me confident to say that we'll still get more staff joining later on. But we do really need staff because if we're doing this as a fan effort, where, OK, you got some free time on the weekend, why not work on the Bionicle Media project, right? If we do it that way, then we're going to need a lot of people because work progresses very slowly if we don't. And I, I don't want that to happen. I don't want to be so slow because these these concepts that we have can be brought to fruition much more quickly if we have the necessary people. If you just remove the people, you just lengthen the amount of time it takes. That That's all it is. It's it's that depressing. It is literally <laughs> depressing that, that that's the issue. It's not that we don't have the skill. We have the skill, but the issue is that we don't have the manpower, yeah, which is sad, which is extremely sad. It it's just makes sad. it take longer. And the, the problem with taking longer is not that, oh, it's taking longer. The problem is that more and more people are leaving the community. If we don't do this fast, then we'll get more and more people leaving. If we do it, then we keep people engaged. If we don't do it, people leave. Remember, update or die. So we really need to get this stuff out as fast as we can in order to keep the community engaged. Because if we don't, dwindle, dwindling population of people interested. So there's there's more at stake here than just, you know, lack of lack of employees, this lack of time to save the community. People don't realize this, but you know, all, all these new web developments have enabled us to draw in people's attention more. But yeah. if we don't fulfill those promises with all this new stuff that we're putting out, then you know, yeah. It's disappointing. It's really disappointing. Yeah, yeah. So it's just one big. That, that's that's what I have to say on Swart and the community and our staffing situation. I'm ready for some questions. Okay. Finally. Wow. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Is I think really we should have a round of right. applause. Finally. Okay. Now, We've now, divided our question. Oh no. What now? Aaron, you had quite this, quite the saying, but I would never hire you to be a history teacher. 
<laughs> I don't know. I think he could handle himself well. Yeah. No, I worry for the kids. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm 13. It's difficult for me to... I mean, I'm a very patient person, and I tolerate long, boring lectures, but this was just no, a little don't. too... you don't. You see, this, oh, that, that, that's what, that's what you guys different, different uh, from me. I thrive off of discussions like that, just talking about stuff for hours on end. I'm sorry. I find I enjoyment out of that. LJ knows I'm this. No. Kahi talks a lot in our oh, yeah. group, and I, it, I, I it, love listening to his rants. So this was, this was, well, nice. I was about to down. fall asleep like halfway through that. I All right. I but everyone, it. everyone, let's get down to brass taxes. LJ, where the heck were you? <laughs> here listening. Yeah. You see, yeah, Ian, uh, sure. I, I know you'd want to understand this, but you can't listen. If you don't stop talking. Dun, dun, okay. dun. Okay. Okay, questions. Yes, questions. questions. <laughs> yes. So we're going to Wanda. stop this right here. We're going to transition into part three, where we actually begin the interview. So we will see you all <laughs> in part three. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs>